What's up, spectators? Welcome back to the episode of Last Window. Last time we explored the fourth floor by getting past the fire door, thanks to Dylon's assistance. We found an old invitation, then we ran into Frank and Tony in the hallway complaining, Frank the Crank yelling at Tony and accusing him of stealing a worthless tape recorder which we'd found in the laundry room, but that bastard Frank isn't even in his room, he's out wandering somewhere, you know. So, I got paged, came back in the room, gonna go speak with, uh, Rachel. Time to get Rachel on the phone. Who is like my really slow Google search. I just ask her a question and then in about three hours she answers me. Red crown! It's B. You have an update for me? I have unearthed some extra information on Rex Foster. What is it? Before he went into insurance investigations, he worked as a reporter for a magazine. What kind of magazine? It was called LA Beat. It was a weekly publication that covered current affairs. Looks like it was pretty classy, too. How does a guy working for a decent magazine like that end up doing dirty work like this? That's the question. You got anything on the hotel? Not yet, I'm afraid. I still got a few leads to follow up on, though. Understood. I didn't mean to have you work through Sunday, Rachel. It's no problem. I didn't have any plans anyway. Plus, it's nice to hear your voice. Yeah, yours too. It's nice to hear your voice. Hangs up. <laughs> that was a good 20 second talk. I nearly forgot. Better go and see if Frank's back. God damn you, Frank the Crank Tank. Let's go, Frank. Let's go take your little deer diary thing. The hell? Tony's door's open. Frank, am I gonna have to shoot Frank? I'll just take a little look through the gap in the door. I can see the back of Frank. What's he doing in there? Trespassing on private property? That's like America's go-to for better whip out the guns. Whip out the assault rifles. Trespassing on private property. I don't know what that accent was, but you know. Damn. That's right, you old George Takei looking mofo. Got your tape recorder right here in my hand. What is it? What is he what is itting me? What are you doing in here? I can assure you I'm not doing anything that could be considered illegal. Not that it's any of your business. I'm not interested in being lied to. Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. This is Tony's room and I don't see him around. How'd you get in and why are you here? You fucking heard me! Punch him, he wants those fists! Yeah, can you hear me? Do you have your hearing aid in? You won't find what you're looking for. Would you care to explain exactly how you can be so sure? I found your tape recorder. You what? So there's no reason why you need to search Tony's room. If you've got it, please return it to me at once. I have something extremely important in that tape recorder. Oh, so you're saying I have leverage that I can extort you? I'll give it back to you. But before I do, I'd like to answer you to answer my questions. Tell me what's on the tape recorder. Why should I share details of my private property with you, Mr. Hyde? See what I'm saying? Oh, anytime you could say private property. Oh boy, you know people will say it. Now you listen to me, old man. I just said, he just said for you to listen to him. And the first thing he does is interject. 
How did my tape recorder come into your possession in the first place? I found it on the floor in the laundry. You told me you went to the laundry today, did you? Are you maybe beginning to realize that you got the wrong man? Perhaps now you can tell me why you were so quick to point the finger at Tony. Isn't it obvious? He looks like the kind of person who'd go around lying and stealing. He has a criminal record too. Once a person has committed such crimes, it's very hard to break the habit. He might think he wants to put all that behind him and start a new life, but he can't. I don't think it's up to you to make that decision. Of all the people who want to start a new life, there's always some that succeed. I think the numbers are very low, though. In Tony's case, I'd say it's next to impossible. He can't change, at least not until he feels genuine remorse for his shady past. Tell me what you think Tony did. He's responsible for a violent incident that caused a lot of pain and suffering. When did this take place? Actually, it happened twice. The first time was five years ago, and the second, four. He was also arrested for theft, but there wasn't enough evidence to convict him for it. Tell me how you know so much about Tony's past. I got friends in the police force, Mr. Hyde. They give me information. That is illegal. What is it? Are you trying to say that you're an ex-cop? About time you piece that together. I worked on the LA police force right up until I retired. Now I'm beginning to make sense of all this. Mr. Raver, what? I don't really give a damn if you were a cop once or not, but I strongly recommend you stop assuming people are guilty without gathering all the facts. Tony didn't take your tape recorder. He had nothing to do with it. Searching his room won't make a blind bit of difference, because I already found it elsewhere. It was on the floor in the laundry all along. Here, this is it, right? What happened to the case? It's cracked. I guess it must have cracked when it fell off the table and hit the floor. Hang on. Where's the tape that was inside? I have no idea. This is how it was when I picked it up. I see. I may have misjudged you a little, Mr. Hyde. I want to thank you for returning this. I'm not interested in your thanks. Maybe you should try giving Tony an apology instead. Once the tape is safely back in my possession, I shall do just that. Frank says his piece and leaves. So Frank's tape has gone missing. But more importantly than that, he's left his room practically upside down. Maybe I'd better clear away some of this before Tony gets back. The tapes scattered across the floor all have labels reading Audition. I wonder what his songs are like. Okay. Huh? This letter paper. I don't believe it. It's the same as the order sheet I received. What's Tony doing with paper like this? Huh? Hey, Hyde. Sorry for coming into your room without permission. Don't sweat it, it's no problem. What, really? I just met old man Raver. He told me you found his tape recorder and returned it to him. Yeah, that's right. He also said that he came to see me and noticed that the door was open. You came in when you saw him inside and asked him some questions. That pretty much covers it, right? Pretty much. Frank said that there was a tape inside the tape recorder, but it's missing. Actually, he did say something like that. Don't know where it could be, though. Tony doesn't know about it either. 
Maybe it's time you eased up on playing Detective Hyde. Stop thinking about his tape and take it easy. Now I stop to think about it. It's been quite a while since you've been in my room. You're right. One more thing though, Tony. Yeah? Did you leave a letter in my door a little while back? A letter? Nothing to do with me. I've never even considered writing you a letter, man. You're telling me the truth, right? Cross my heart. I mean, I write letters from time to time. Just not to you. Who'd you write to? Thought you'd have guessed by now. I write them to Betty. I got this plan for us to give each other presents at Christmas. Problem is, I just can't seem to get the wording right. Tell me, Tony, where'd you lay your hands on that letter paper and envelope? They were given to me. By who? I got them from Dylon. You know, the guy from the third floor. Hey, Hyde. Why don't you hang out here for a while? I'll let you hear my latest song. I think I'll take a rain check on that. I got a few things I need to sort out. Okay, maybe next time. Aww, Tony wants to hang out. Poor Tony. I like Tony. Alright, now we're going back to the third floor. Honestly, this guy's getting all this great exercise. Because he has to go back and forth. There's that murderous looking Dylon. I wanted to ask you something. What is it? Did you give Tony letter paper in an envelope? Yeah, that was me, all right. Is there some sort of problem? I just wondered where you got them from. Actually, they were given to me too. I got them as a present for all my hard work. They were from Mrs. Patrice. I figured I had no use for them, so I passed them on to Tony. I see. So you haven't put a letter in my door recently. A letter? Certainly not me. Why would I be writing you letters? If I have something I need to say to you, I'd rather just come and say it. Yeah, I expect you would. Why are you asking anyway? It's nothing, I was just thinking about something. If you're really curious about something to do with that letter set, maybe you should just pay a visit to Mrs. Patrice and ask her directly. In fact, I was on my way there. Shall we pay a visit together? Well, I have to see her anyway to return something I borrowed. Come on, let's go. Fair enough. Okay, right over here. I wasn't expecting to see the both of you. Is there something I can help you with? It's nothing special. We just bumped into each other as we were both heading here. I came over to return these to you. Here you go. What were those keys for? Why, thank you, Dylan. Okay, now I can leave you both to it. See you later. Dylon hurries off. What were those keys? They're the spare keys to the apartments. Dylon occasionally has need to borrow them from me. For one, it's necessary for when he's doing certain types of maintenance. Okay, that makes sense. So, Mr. Hyde, to what do I owe this pleasure? I just want to ask you something. And what might that be? Did you give Dylon a letter set? A letter set? Oh yes, I remember. Yes, I did give one to him. I remember it clearly now. The rain is gone. Can you recall where you got it from? Why, Mr. Hyde, would you like a set too? If that's the case, I'm gonna have to disappoint you. That was the last one I had. If you're really keen, though, you could try burying, uh, buying one yourself. If memory serves, they are on sale at the local drugstore. 
They aren't very expensive either. Interesting, so I can pick up an identical set quite easily. So much for that. Have you left a letter in my door recently? A letter? Well, I put a copy of the closure notice in your mailbox, but nothing more. Have you not checked it yet? Actually, I've already read that letter. That's good to hear. Is that all you came here to ask, Mr. Hyde? Yeah, that's just about it. Sorry to bother you. Oh, actually, there was something else. There was? Mr. Wolf from room 201 has promised to settle his rent after all. Tony said that, did he? He did. He called me earlier to assure me that he'll be settling his debt soon. That's good news. It is. Now, I must be going. Mags returns to the comfort of her room. I return to my room and throw myself onto the sofa. I just can't get it out of my head. Who could have sent me that order sheet? Doesn't matter how hard I think about it, there's no answer in sight. Guess I should set my mind to uncovering a little more on the Scarlet Star first. I think it's time for me to take another look around the fourth floor. This guy really does need, like, some hobbies or something. Bow, 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 ba do do. Strange, the door's open. Looks like whoever's in there had the sense to use the doorstop too. Time to find out who it is. Spooky music, cause we're sneaking around. Sneaking around music. I recognize that figure. Hey! Oh, what are you doing here on private property? This guy's a crook. Mr. Raver, what brings you all the way up here? And just how has that got anything to do with you? It hasn't, but isn't the fourth floor off limits to everyone? I am well aware of that. But I could ask you the same question, Mr. Hyde. Why are you skulking around where you shouldn't be? I kind of stumbled up here, and it didn't take me long to see the fire door was open. I thought Dylon must have been inside, so I poked my head in. Except, I didn't find Dylon. I found you. So I'll ask you again. What are you doing up here? I came here. I mean, I arrived here, much like you. I noticed the door was ajar and came inside to investigate. I saw that nobody was here and thought that someone had forgotten to close the door. I'm going to have to give Dylon a piece of my mind when I see him. Frank stops our discussion there and leaves the room. He must be a fool if he thinks I'm buying that story. What could he have been doing here? Hmm... Very suspicious indeed. One of the desk drawers is open. Seems to be empty. There's an imprint of something at the back. What could have been kept in here? Well, why don't I try this? Oh, I thought I could maybe use it. I guess not. Some pieces of paper scattered around the desk. 
These are all sheets of the Hotel Cape West heading, headed writing paper. There are visible handprints on the desk and some of the papers. Someone must have been searching around here. Other than myself, I mean. Okay. Let's try looking somewhere else. A table by the window. It probably had been nice to sit here back in the day. Now it's just covered in these mysterious dark stains. I hope I won't catch anything from being in here. It smells like the curtains aren't the only things hanging in here. Okay. That's it? The bathtub is moldy. I'm glad I'm spending my day checking out moldy bathtubs. Doesn't matter how much class the wooden seat adds, I'm not going near it. Okay. Huh? Hey, Hyde. Tony. What are you doing all the way up here, man? I could ask you the same question. Yeah, well, I have, uh... You have what? Damn it, man, I'm no good at keeping things secret. Spit it out, Tony. What are you doing up here? Okay, okay. I'll tell you, but first tell me your reason for being up here. I mean... You must have a reason, right? Not really, just taking a stroll. A stroll? You? Yeah, is that a crime now? I figured it'd be nice to see this floor before we all have to move out. When I got to the top of the stairs, I saw that the fire door was open. Now, isn't that weird? That's the same reason I'm here. I hate to ask, but could you make yourself scarce this time? I want to take a look around up here, but I want to do it alone. Sorry, but my stroll's not finished yet. Maybe you should go home and come back another time. Me? Come on, man. Take a hike and leave me in peace up here. Why are you so keen on being alone? Just trust me on this. If you hang around, it's all going to go wrong and I won't get the cash. Cash? What cash? Just forget about that. It's my business. I'm getting a pretty clear picture of you, Tony. You call Mags to tell her the rent's coming soon. Also, Betty's thinking you're gonna buy her a snazzy Christmas present. Where's all this money coming from? It's my business. It's got absolutely nothing to do with you. How are you getting all the money to pay for these things? I got something lined up, that's all. What do you got lined up? What's with you, man? Are you deaf? Hey. You planning on ripping somebody off? Would I do a thing like that? Tony, you'd better come clean, or else. Hide, wait a sec. I haven't done anything yet. So why are you hanging around up here? Look, Hide, I'm begging you. Let's have this chat another time. This time I have to be alone. Just turn around and leave, will ya? And you expect me to just do what you say? Please hide. If you don't take my advice, things could turn nasty up here. Who's planning on paying you a visit? I can't tell you that. Let me guess. You're expecting Frank, right? Please go back to your room. If you're here when he turns up, my plan's gonna disappear in a puff of smoke. Hmm. 
Should I be aggressive or not aggressive? What's this plan you're talking about? I can't tell you. I just can't. Just what is Tony hiding? I don't have enough of the facts to pressure him further. Just what are you up to? I can't tell you. I just can't. Okay. Tony, wait here for a while. Hide? Oh, I can gather clues in return. Isn't that interesting? Well, okay, hold on a second. Okay. Three, zero, two. Tony's still inside. I better leave this open. Hey, Tammy. Oh, you're so cute. Three, zero, two. What do you want? Just want to ask you something. What is it now? It's about why you were up in room 404. Were you hoping to meet somebody while you were up there? Well... Actually, Tony called me up there. Just as I suspected. <laughs> do you know why? I haven't got a clue. He just said something about having an important topic that we needed to discuss. Did you end up meeting him then? No. Because you turned up and I decided not to go through with it. I see. Anyways, I'm sick to the back teeth of this subject. And I'm too busy to stand here and talk to you. Please leave. Not yet. I still have to ask you something. Did you get your tape back in the end? No, I'm still looking. Now that's interesting. Are we quite done now? I have things to do. Frank retreats back into his room. So that's how it went down. Um, okay. I'm assuming he, he has the tape and wants the money to get it back. I'm assuming. But it pretty much has been uh, 30 minutes, so I'm probably going to end it here. But why don't we at least go back to the room, and then we can end the video. Alright, perfect. So, stay tuned for the next episode, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye!